What is happening, y'all? What's going on? Y'all already know I have to keep you fed. It's another week. That means it's time for, you know, some more videos to keep you well nourished until season two of House of the Dragon drops, where, of course, I will be doing reviews for every single episode of that season. Y'all already know. If you don't know, Mick, you, you need to go ahead Go into the back of my archives, honey, of this YouTube channel, and you need to make sure you educate yourself because the reviews are funny. I reviewed season one, of course, of House of the Dragon. I have a whole bunch of shows and stuff I review from Wheel of Time to whatever. You know what I mean? Like, that's what we do around here. So we are just keeping keeping us well fed until the time comes where we get to see a son for a son the first episode don't play with me okay okay so let's talk about it in this video we're going to discuss what would happen if other houses in westeros could use dragons in the way that targaryens use them now this topic was going a little crazy on twitter and some of the spheres that i be you know in this topic was going on on social media so i was like let's talk about it how would these houses use these dragons all right so first let's talk about house lannister i feel like this would be <laughs> insanity <laughs> given any one of these bitches Giving anybody these misses a dragon. First of all, let's start with Cersei. Can you imagine her and Danny facing off at the dragon pit or something? And both of them are mounted on dragons. Can you imagine that? Like the both of them just descending to the meeting in the dragon pit on their dragons or something happens and like they just start fighting each other over the dragon pit with their dragons. I don't know. But giving any one of these Lannisters, right, the power of dragons seems like <laughs> it's just a recipe for absolute disaster. Like, imagine Cersei blowing up the Sept with a dragon, like, with a dragon instead of wildfire, like Magor the Cruel did. It's just, <laughs> oh my God. Can you imagine Tywin with a dragon? <laughs> Could you imagine? Now, The Reigns of Casimir was a song written about House Lannisters, aka Tywin's cruelty against House Rain, who rebelled against, you know, the Lannisters, whatever. Um, Tywin destroyed House Rain's entire house uh, when they tried to rebel. And I think at that time, Tywin had some shit to prove, right? Like, a lot of people saw the Lannisters as weak or whatever, and Tywin was having none of that. So, just like, just, just the fact that a song was already written about this motherfucker's crazy ass um antics <laughs> and he didn't even have a dragon can you imagine what would happen if he actually had one like uh the fear that he would strike in people heart tywin strikes fear in people heart when he arrived just you know on a horse or some shit like imagine him on a dragon so house lannister with something to prove or with their pride on the line, I feel like would be a terrible force to be reckoned with if they had dragons. <laughs> like, terrible. I think Tyrion from the show, at least, Tyrion would have just loved a dragon as a pet, right? Like, we all know how much Tyrion dreamed um, of having a dragon. So I think, of course, he would use it as a weapon when he needed to. But the rest of the time, I do feel like he would just, it would just be his pet because he thought he already thinks they're so cool and stuff. Um... So yeah, I just, I don't know. House Lannister would be absolutely terrifying with a dragon. <laughs> I would not want to face the ass. Like I just, I'm thinking of like Cersei and Tywin with, <laughs> it's just terrifying, terrifying thought. Now, House Stark, let's talk about Stark. House Stark, I feel like I'd definitely give them some ice dragons or something, like make their, make the dragon's ice breath just as devastating as a fire breath, but just in different ways, right? Don't get me wrong though, it would definitely be cool to see the Starks with fire dragons too. Like maybe a couple of them get dragons from the south or something, you know, like maybe, or they get their eggs, eggs mixed up or something. I don't know, I don't know, I don't know. But like if John wasn't going to have an ice dragon and have a fire one since he's Targaryen or whatever, then maybe we could make Arya have a fire dragon and the rest of the Starks have an ice dragon. Like uh like maybe Arya swiped an egg from John's dragon or some shit and now she has a fire. You see what I'm saying? Like, I don't know, or like, I don't know, I don't know. Think of something, do something. This is a what if. Anyway, you already know we breaking canon at this this point. We breaking lore, right? We breaking the lore. Um 
So I think that the Stark Ice Dragons would almost blend in with their snowy surroundings, right? They would just be real chill, um, one with nature type tees. Like they wouldn't be as extroverted as some of the Targaryen dragons. They'd be laid back. But once you get them active, they get active. Like once they start to fight, they're going to finish that shit, you know? Now, I think because of the Stark's way of life, I think they'd really reverence the dragons in a way that other houses would not. I think most of the Lannisters would treat the dragons like war machines and extensions of their ego, blah, blah, blah. <laughs> Whereas with the Starks, I think the bond would be respected like the direwolf bond, right? Like there would be some kind of reverence, respect there in the same way uh, that they respect the weirwood trees, the connections with each other, connections with nature, like I said. So this is why I think the Starks would have some of the most, like some of the strongest bonds, dragon bonds that we would ever see in Westeros, especially if you combine that with the skin change and shit and all the green sea, you know what I mean? Like it would, just, I think they would have one of the strongest bonds that you could ever have with a dragon if they were, you know, capable of, riding dragons doing you know fucking around with dragons so what do you think about that what do you think about giving them ice dragons instead of fire ones right right i think that'd be so cool i think it'd be so cool i wish we got to see them in the show oh my god anyway anyway i don't know <laughs> okay so let's talk about martell but house martell but honestly it's just a dornish in general right house martell's dragons i think would be some of the most vicious on the entire planet <laughs> i feel like just based off of house martell's location those dragons would have to be some of the most thick-skinned, durable ones out there, strongest ones out there. Like, imagine training your dragons in the deserts of Dorne. <laughs> Half the reason the Dornish were able to withstand the Targaryens in the first place when they came for them uh, was because the Dornish would retreat and hide in inhospitable terrain when the dragon lords, when the Targaryen dragon lords would come for them. So... The Targaryen armies could not survive entering Dorne through the Red Mountains or, you know, they had some narrow ass choke points that they would just line them up and, and slice the, these Targaryen armies down. The Dornish would disappear, like I said, into inhospitable deserts, right? To avoid direct confrontation, they'd use stealth and guerrilla style warfare against the Targaryens. So I can just imagine the Dornish training their dragons in the territories that the Targaryens already consider inhospitable, right? Like training them in that environment, in those, th in those places, and then just waiting for the Targs to show up. It would be an insane battle. <laughs> it would just be insane to see, right? Um, like guerrilla style warfare with dragons, stealth attacks, surprise attacks. I don't know. People should be very afraid. I think if the Dornish had them dragons, they would be so formidable. And if they're just off the ability to navigate through the desert um, in these uh, fucked up ass terrains, these mountains and shit, like we definitely would not want to be playing with they ass. Um, now, let's talk about House Baratheon really quickly though <laughs> no shade <laughs> so if we're talking about game of thrones baratheons right like the tv show baratheons right i feel like their dragons would be strong and powerful but they wouldn't really be trained as well as they could be and i don't know why i think that. i'm just thinking about the personalities of robert baratheon stannis baratheon renly specifically right like i just feel like the dragons would look great they'd look regal but there would be some aspects about raising or training the dragons that the baratheons would not take seriously or just wouldn't do and wouldn't feel like doing or whatever and that would lead them to not being that that would lead the dragons uh to not being as powerful as they could be in battle that's what i think that's just what the baratheons give me i don't know there's no concrete like <laughs> reason for this it just feels like based off of the tv show personalities it they would make some dumb ass annoying ass mistake that <laughs> would just keep their dragons from realizing their fullest potential so let me know what you think about that one the baratheon one and i know this one is not a house but we can just say it's an honorable mention i feel like the dothraki would be <laughs> You talk about the Dornish, girl, the Dothraki would be absolutely ridiculous with the power of dragons. So technically, I know that the Dothraki already had a dragon with Daenerys or whatever, but 
I cannot imagine the terror that would be unleashed upon the world if the Dothraki had a whole culture around dragon riding uh, similar to the one that we see with the Targaryens um, to where they're like, you know, taking eggs and putting it in their babies cradles and stuff and you got like humans and dragons growing up alongside each other can you imagine if that culture was in place um in the dothraki societies now you see because you already see how they are with their horses can you imagine if they also had dragons <laughs> can you imagine if they also had dragons so yeah let me know what you think of this because like i said i saw the uh topic on social media and i'm like oh that is fun like can you imagine <laughs> i think that like really who would freak me out having like the most would be the lannisters like i said well the Lannisters would be the most one, like some of the most fucking annoying and sadistic with it. Um, the Dornish, I think, would be the most effective. One of some of the most effective. The Dornish and Dothraki with dragons will be some of the most effective fighters Westeros has. I mean, planet toast, bitch. The entire planet has ever seen. So leave your thoughts in the comments. Love you so much. Thank you so much for checking out the video, and I'll catch y'all later. Peace. Make sure that you're going to www.zaraxia.com when you join the wait list there on the site. You will be the first to be notified when I drop my sequel. Also, you'll immediately get chapter one of my upcoming sequel of the upcoming book uh, sent to your email as a PDF. So check that out. Also, this is a different excerpt. Uh, from my upcoming book so you definitely want to pause to read if you're trying to get your life uh, keep in mind that this upcoming book the sequel is following up the first book that is already released called Zaraxia Wrath of the God King um, I released it a couple years ago a few years ago it was my really it was my introduction to writing uh, fantasy and stuff so just go easy on me but either way as you can see here it's giving 4.9 stars. It's giving 4.9 stars. So yeah, check out Zaraxia Wrath of the God King while you wait for Zaraxia, the vengeance of cold wind, right? And go to Zaraxia.com, sign up, join the waitlist, get your free chapter. Thank you so much.